camera on, mic on, spot on. Over the last few years, we've made a number of these short documentaries. And uh, what I find most challenging, especially when I'm working by myself, is how do I remember to get all the details right, that each and every one of them makes such a difference to the quality of the end product, especially out in the real world where there's so many more variables and distractions. So today I'm trying out a technique that was actually invented by the Japanese for their rail system uh, to help me get everything right. And along the way, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, how strategies like this can help to avoid uh, mistakes that are caused by automation bias. But first. In the late 90s, my wife and I worked in Japan. Uh, I was teaching in the city of Koryama, uh, working at companies like Matsushita Denko, uh, Hitachi. On Fridays, I actually got to ride the bullet train one stop to teach a course at Panasonic. Now on the weekends, I uh, hopped on a local train to go uh, visit my wife who was uh, working down in Hitachi City. And of course, every now and again, we'd hop on a train down to Tokyo and explore the city via their excellent rail system. All this is to say, we rode a lot of trains. We often noticed that the rail staff would conduct themselves in this very formalized way that we just assumed was uh, part of their excellent customer service. In fact, it wasn't until I was working on this project uh, that I learned what exactly it meant. It's called Shisa Kanko, pointing and calling. This occupational safety method was designed to help workers reduce mistakes by pointing at important indicators and calling out their status. It was developed in Japan in the 1900s for their growing fleet of steam locomotives, and now it's used around the world in a variety of industries. A study by the Japanese Railway Technical Research Institute found that the combination of gesturing at points of interest while calling out the objective for each one could reduce errors up to 85%. Now, this may seem like a very quaint way of doing something for which technology would be better suited. I mean, this is a show about automation after all. And as many of you know, the world is full of situations where the rigorousness of a machine needs to be tempered by the judgment of a human. It's this judgment that brings us to today's topic, automation bias. As our world increasingly leans on automation-based decision-making for things like healthcare, industry, automation, the more this kind of bias can become problematic. Errors resulting from automation bias usually occur in situations where you have a machine that is in the primary role of decision-maker and a human who is there as an observer and fail-safe. There are two types of errors associated with automation bias. Commission errors occur when users follow an automated system's advice without considering other sources of information. For example, the panel may say that the train is ready to leave the station. However, some debris has partially covered the tracks, and the train can't test for this. Pointing to the tracks ahead and calling out the status would catch this problem. Omission errors happen when automated systems fail to spot a problem and the human doesn't notice because they're not paying close enough attention. For example, the system may show that all train doors have closed, yet a diligent scan of the length of the train shows that one of them is blocked open by something. Unless you made a point of pointing at each door, you could easily miss it. Pointing and calling is not the only way to mitigate automation bias. The real takeaway here is that somewhere in your critical process, there's a person waiting for an automated system to make a mistake. And odds are, they're either highly distracted or highly bored. They might be grateful for a new way to keep 